A10VSO DFR pump is a type of axial piston variable pump that can adjust the displacement of the pump according to the pressure and flow requirements of the system. It has a pressure and flow controller that consists of a pressure control valve and a flow control valve. Pressure control limits the maximum pressure at the pump outlet, and the flow control regulates the flow rate at the actuator inlet. The output pressure is connected to the bias piston. This piston holds the swash plate in the maximum displacement angle. The output pressure is also connected to the control valve. The control valve has two other passages. One of them is connected to the tank pressure. The spring chamber of cutoff valve is connected to the tank pressure. The spring chamber of LS valve in DFR is also connected to the tank pressure through an orifice. But in DFR1 control, the connection of the spring chamber to the tank is disconnected. This is the difference between DFR and DFR1. The third way of control valve is connected to the control piston. The LS and cutoff springs push the LS and cutoff spools and connect the control piston to the tank. The output pressure acts on the LS and cutoff spools and pushes them against the spring's forces. The movement of each of the spools connects the output pressure to the control piston. The output pressure passes through the control valve and goes to the actuator. A signal line from upstream of the actuator is connected to the LS spring chamber. Let's close the control valve. When the valve is closed, the output pressure rises. This pressure pushes the LS and cutoff spools against the springs. Since the LS spring force is set lower than the cutoff spring force, the LS spool moves first. The LS adjustment is usually around 20 bar. In this video, we set it at 20 bar. So, when the output pressure reaches 20 bar, the LS spool moves. And the control piston is connected to the output pressure. The control piston has a larger effective area than the bias piston. When the pressure of the control piston reaches a value that can overcome the force of the bias piston and its spring, the control piston pushes the swash plate and reduces its angle. The swash plate angle is reduced to the minimum required to maintain the output pressure at 20 bar and compensate for the pump's internal leaks. In this video, I'm not going to explain how LS valve controls the displacement of the pump as needed. In my next video, I will try to explain it. Now let's fully open the control valve. When the valve is fully open, the output pressure of the pump is equal to the pressure of the LS valve spring chamber. So if the pressure of the actuator raises more than 20 bar, the LS spool cannot move because this pressure is also present in its spring chamber, and the pump maintains its maximum displacement. Now, if we close the control valve, the connection between the LS spring chamber and the output pressure of the pump will be interrupted. The pressure of the spring chamber will be discharged to the tank through the decompression orifice. In DFR1, this orifice is placed in the control valve. Now that the pressure of the LS spring chamber has completely dropped, the output pressure can overcome the LS spring and pushes the LS spool, and pump will shift to standby position. Now let's see the function of cutoff valve. The function of the cutoff control is the same as LS control, 
except that its spring chamber is always connected to the tank pressure and higher output pressure is required to overcome its spring force. Let's set it at 150 bar. When the output pressure reaches 150 bar, it pushes the cutoff spool against the springs. This will connect the output pressure to the control piston through the cutoff spool. The displacement of the pump is reduced until the pressure does not exceed 150 bar. 